is a drawing of the layout of the buildings. I've been asked quite a lot of questions in the comments about the layout and people are getting a little bit confused because there's quite a few buildings. So I thought I'd just film this again. I have filmed this once before. I think it was in episode 12. Right, Tony's just come to fetch me and said, do I want to see something quite amazing? Well, of course I do. I said, should I bring my camera? And he said, yes, he thinks so. Don't know what it is. Just about to find out. Right, he's gone out the front door. Not sure where to. And along towards the little shop. It's not the little shop, it's the little house. Where is he? Ah, what's going on here then? This is the alleyway between our side house and the little house or that used to be the little shop. Okay, what have you found here, Tony? Obviously been doing some digging. Something not very good. There's something that's not very good? First of all. Pardon? Something that's not very good, first of all, is the fact that the rainwater drain goes into the foul water drain. Okay, but that's not unusual in an old house, is it? Not unusual in an old house. Isn't it? Right, I think we've had that in the UK before. So you found a drain. Yes. Good. Well, Tony's trying to investigate the drains at the moment. A yellow pipe. A yellow pipe? No. Yes. Now, yellow pipe is meant to be gas, is it not? It is, but I think it's just the electricity. Well, the current colours now, a yellow pipe is a gas pipe, but there is no town gas. So it's flexible, so I'm thinking it's just a shield for the electricity. Why would they do yellow, though? Well, anything they had at the time, I should think. Right, and we're talking about probably a long time ago again. Before the, the more recent... That's the rainwater pipe. Okay. Goes around here, along oh, here. Oh, I see. So and, the rain... this, and this is where Tony's toilet is upstairs, connecting to the side here. All oh, right, so they don't have a stack pipe? Uh, yes, well, that is acted as a stack pipe over what, there. What, the rainwater pipe? Yes, so it gets over here. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> That's not the interesting Okay, so what have you called me out here to say? Do I want to see something very interesting? That's our pipe coming down here. Hang on, hang on. Let's take the rainwater pipe coming down here. Right, so this is Tony the Paint and Trace's rainwater pipe at the side of their courtyard bit at the back of the little house. Goes down here. And Comes goes down the wall. Goes into this pier. Goes into this at the floor level. And this gully also. And it goes along as a gully and also. There's a rainwater pipe from the adjoining house at the back. But what's the interesting thing? Right. Oh, how did you get in there? I kicked it. <laughs> ah, right. The damned elusive. This the, is the damned elusive. Well. Oh, you're joking. No. But this is not our house. But this is our access. This is joint access. This is shared tone. Obviously we've never been through here before. There's a window here, Tony, from next door's house. Yes. And a and a and a pipe coming out the wall. So this is the end room of our house. This is our old doorway. Yes. Wow. This is the end room. This is the arrow slit uh, here. Yeah. And that's the well. Oh, that's a proper well? Yes. Wow. So that's why is that not in our bit then? Because that's somebody else's garden well, here. That's been that's been blocked up. This is our house here. This is the side of our back barn, the one that's currently sheeted over. And then that wall that we're looking at, by the well, is as far as our passageway goes at the side of our barn. Obviously, this is access into the garden of the side house that's attached. But wow, I can't get near it because there's oh, there's loads of bushes in the way. Ah, oh, look 
could be able to start on that. And it's got a huge chain. Wow, that really is an old wheel. A huge chain with the big handle. Now, do you think this is in line with where we think our one was? Obviously, it's got a big galvanized sheet over the top of it. Do you think it would still work? Yeah, of course it would. Look at the big windy handle on the side here. That's amazing. Obviously that tree wants chopping down there. We, we need to speak to the neighbours and see if we can open this bit up. Wow. It's massive. I mean, look at that stone. That is absolutely huge, that round, big round stone on the top of it. It must have been a shared will. Yes, well, I don't know. I just... That's amazing. <laughs> right. Well, you were looking for a water supply, weren't you? Where to yeah. get extra water from? I'm not sure this is the answer, but... I need to stand back now and film it properly. I still can't. I have to get back through all the trees. Anyway, but yeah, it's obviously it's got lots of rubbish on top of it, but that's amazing. That concrete, that corrugated sheet's just to stop the stuff falling down the well. Well, yeah, so it probably would still be useful. Yeah. Wow. I thought if you turn that handle, I reckon it would work. <laughs> We'd have to talk to the neighbours and see if we can do that. Because this is part of the shared access way. This is a, a neighbour's gate. And this left side is our back of our barn and I'm going to turn around and yeah this alleyway is accessed by everybody so we could open up this doorway again yes right could. wow but then you, you could do that quite easily because that's in that room that doorway. this little tiny window here is the little um, it's like an arrow slit. Yeah, but it's like a sunken doorway. Into a uh, sunken floor, isn't it? In that little bit, yeah. like a storeroom, like a wine cellar, where we could see from the inside that the doorway had been blocked up. We we'll get more of a sense of the age of it now, and then we can see our upstairs windows. That one with the bars is the back. Is the back room on the side house before it hits the barn. Now, looking at that roof there, so look, it's a bit like looking at this one from the barn. Some some work's been done to the roof up there because it's got aluminium on the side of it, look, or galvanized. Yeah. So there has been some works to the back of these roofs at the yeah. back. It's just the front one we need to look at. That's quite interesting. It's extremely interesting, Joan. When we look at, when we look to say, is there a well? That is our archetypal design of a well. If someone asked me to draw a well, that's exactly the sort of shape I would draw. It's amazing. I wonder if there's any coins down it. <laughs> like a wishing well. Right. So obviously our, our neighbour's got a window out onto this. And everybody at one time would have had doorways out onto this. We've got windows that look out the back here as well, haven't we? Wow! Wasn't expecting that this morning. Really? Yeah, we have a window up, right up the top here. You can see the state of it. That's in the middle room that we've only ventured into once on my vlogs. So this bit here where the window is there, Tony, where your phone is, don't leave your phone on that window ledge. We currently can't see that from the inside, can we? Hey? That that window there. No. I'm just trying to get my bearings. Obviously we've been in that room 
up the top which is the most damaged room and we know that wants a lot of work up there I'm um, just trying to work out so this would be up the back of the sheet behind the stairs under the stairs it's yeah. just the little tiny sort of secret room at the back of the stairs yes, we haven't been in. so it would have a window as well yes right this is the one that's blocked boxed in by the cupboard that's been, been built in the corner that's where we've not been in we will time. investigate it one day but we're not ready to pull the cupboard out yet but yeah there's a lot of secret space in there <laughs> what I can't make out is what well you've got this pipe coming this way yeah does this belong to just the little house or all the houses this pipe all of this along here does it just go back to here yes well, no, or does it carry on i'll wager it carries on so we think have they got they haven't got anything anywhere it comes out along there have they Rainwater pipe up the end here. ah yeah but is it it's not connected to anything no it's not well, they've reconnected it here i see right but obviously it goes as far as at least here Maybe we should just go and ask them. Maybe. But yes. Yes. What I can't make out is though, where is the connection from in here to here? So this is just a straight connection onto the pipe. Right. Or what this is this just rainwater here? Is there another connection nearby somewhere? Yeah, that's rainwater there. That's right. your rainwater, your side. So you've worked out where the toilet is. You'd think three it meters, would be pretty meters, much straight three, down. Three metres, one hundred is exactly the centre of Where the, that step is? Se it's not a step. What is it then? I don't know what it is. Well, maybe it was a step at one point. But no, this, this is a window. Oh, OK. So maybe that is covering up a connection or something? This is just a straight connection here. I can't see a T. But you wouldn't, it would be going the other way, wouldn't it? It would be going that way. Yeah, I think you just need to do a bit more digging, don't you? Yes. That's what I can't make out. And there's a rodding high eye here. Yeah, so that's got to be something to do with drains then. You wouldn't have a rodding eye in it, would you? I can't make out what's happening here. Right. And we put a bucket full of hot water in Tom's kitchen sink. And Mano reckoned he could feel the temperature difference here. So, yeah, because the kitchen sink is alongside this wall as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it all, all goes all into in one line. pipe yeah. underneath, underneath the cupboard in there. So, is there a, a big yes. waste? Yes. Like, the toilet waste is inside the building? Yes. And then it comes to this point and comes out the building. Yes. It has to be along here somewhere then, doesn't it? Well, it's it's exactly the centre of this. Right. That's what it is then. That's probably what that's there for. So what I think I'll do is get some power around here. Excavate this. Yeah. And find out. Very carefully. <laughs> it could be a smelly job otherwise. I can't make that out though. Alright. Let me pass my trowel, please. Uh by your feet. Oh yeah. Okay. Right, so what did Manu say about the yellow pipe then? He, he shook his head and shrugged his shoulders. Oh, okay. So he doesn't no, know. No. But there is no town, we know there's no town gas. No, we know there's no town gas. And it's flexible, look. It would be solid, wouldn't it, it if would it was a gas solid, pipe? Yes. Or would it have a pipe inside it? Oh, that's possible as well. Right, anyway, you're not going to disturb it, are you? No. Okay. So, can I come out now? Yes. <laughs> or am I stuck here for are the you day? Fe you fed up there, are you? Yeah, I've seen all the interesting stuff. <laughs> you don't want to yeah. stick there and do some digging on you. <laughs> uh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> wow 
That's amazing. That is amazing. I'll get some power out of this window. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you go inside, I'll... So what is that bit there then? That drain cover down there. So we're trying to investigate. Is there a connection in there? Is that like our one at our gateway? Maybe. I'm saying is that would be easier to connect to, would it not? Out here. Oh no, definitely. Oh, would it? Yeah. Oh. Nothing. It's definitely a, a no, pipe. No. no, that's nothing. Well, Rainwater? It What's the pipe for? I don't know. Oh, weird. Oh, there's one going that way as well. Right, I'm trying to film it, Tony, sorry. It's but probably this. Rainwater pipe. Now. Ah. How can that be? There's a pipe there, but that's for cables. But you see, what I can't understand is, you've got a pipe coming this way. Yeah. And then a pipe going that way. But nothing going this way. Well then, one must be the inlet and one must be the outlet, so which is which? It's coming from over there to here. Yeah, and then what? But that's deeper over there than it is here. Strange. I don't know. It doesn't look very wet. It doesn't. But then we haven't had a lot of rain lately. But then... And then, is there something underneath it that's understand. covered up by the mud? I can't understand. Because there's another one here. That's the. These are the water things. These EU things. Because we have these outside our house, all the houses. This is the one where you lift it up to rob our drains when they get blocked, isn't it? Yes. Out in the street. Yeah. Look. That's the drain right down there. There's soapy water in there. Yes. Well, have you put soapy water down? No, not soapy water. I haven't. So it's, it must be connected to the next door house then? I don't know. I really don't know. Why would there be four here instead of two? Why is this here? Right, no, listen, Tony. We have two outside our house. There's four outside here. So I think two must belong to the little house. And two must belong to the behind house, which Maybe. is now ours. But this is interesting because... Because this here... It's like a puzzle, isn't it? This here... Is in line with the, with the, with, with the brick of the house. Ah, bonjour! <laughs> bonjour! Uh, yeah, in line with the brick of the house. house. Right, sort of. And yet, and yet... But the pipe didn't look... It looked like it was coming from the middle. Well, what you might find, you've got a little bit of concrete at this end, Tone, and then obviously you've got a lot of earth. Maybe if you cleared the earth, you probably might be able to see where it's been concreted. Where? Well, I don't know. You've got concrete around this bit here, at the front bit. Then you've got obviously earth and muck that's been there for years. But that's if they put a channel in for a drain, would they not then... No, but that's there. Square there. It's way above the there was nothing in that square, was there? So, is that pipe that you found just the rainwater pipe? I don't know, yeah. It might be, mightn't it? it might and then there might be a totally separate one for the sewer. Over there. Sorry? Further down. Further down. Yeah, I think you've got to keep digging, so. I need to get some power. <laughs> but interesting. Yeah, it'd be even more interesting. Yeah, I'm um, thinking about it, so, and there's four of yeah. these drain covers. I don't know why they had two, but we've got two outside ours. And we've also got one of those. What is this one for, this Quattro 400 thing? Don't know. Because we've got one outside the next door house. I think that's to do with the, look, the rainwater. It's right next to the rainwater pipe. Yeah, maybe. 
So that's in so line with the middle then, one. So we're thinking then, we're thinking that Mano was wrong and he didn't detect the difference in water. So difference in what? Oh, the temperature. temperature when I put boiling hot water down. Right. Because I think that would have made a bigger difference. Well, it might be an idea to open these up and pour something down the sink and see what's... No? That's a pretty good idea. I can film it for you. And my and my viewers, we can put some nice soapy water down and see we can see where it comes out. No, I think my first point of call is to carry on digging in there. Okay. Because I need to find that. In there. Right. So we've definitely got four of these, which we we believe means two houses worth of drains coming this way. Then, then we have a similar drain cover in front of the downpipe for our Jeet side house, which also has a grating in front of it. And then along the main house, we have a grating in front of our door, which is obviously for rainwater, and we have the quattro. But then we have two more of these EU. So we have two for one house. In our instance, is one on our property and one on the pavement. The other ones are all on the pavement. Yeah. There seems to be one of these big square drain covers by each downpipe, which is the rainwater. So I'm at the back of the barn at the moment, at this little side passageway, which I've filmed once before. This is where all the bottle racks are on the wall. We've still got to get rid of the ivy. Anyway. So this is where the well is. Now, when we looked through that little hole, obviously we couldn't recognise it as a well. But there is a hole in the wall, and right behind that wall is the well. No wonder we couldn't find it. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Now I can see, by looking at it from this direction, I can see that is, I can see the top cover. Let me see if I can show you. I can recognise what I'm looking at now. Just looked like a pile of rubbish before, but that little galvan what looks like a galvanised bit is actually the cover over the top of the well. To stop the leaves and things going down, I suppose. But wow, amazing. Yeah, Tony said he'd found something amazing. I think that's pretty amazing. A huge well. Oh, and something else that's amazing that I've just noticed. We have blossom. Wow. Blossom on the tree. Does that mean this is some sort of a fruit tree? Maybe. Wow. Yeah. Very pretty. Yeah, I don't think it looks like a fruit tree. See the well? No. Now, that's very strange, Tony, because on the old map of the, like the, what they call the cadastral, which shows you what your plot is that you own, when we got when we bought the house it's got a tiny stream marked on it which goes almost under our barn and joins up with the river which is in line with where that well is so it must be like an underground stream spring because it's it also goes to the um, main square anyway I'll let you dig a bit further and I'll come back and investigate some more, Tony. Yeah. Do you know what that metal thing is oh, on the wall there with the four things hanging? I have no idea. That's very strange. 
with four metal things bolted to it. Don't know. What would that be for? Don't know. No it's idea. not even straight, is it? It's very wonky. Don't know. It's embedded in the wall. Don't know. Very strange. Uh, oh yeah, I can see in the side of that step-looking thing where there's a drain rod. Pardon? That's about the that's about the size of a um, sink drain, though, isn't it? Yes. All right. But you only need it big enough to get a rod in there. Yeah, but then usually you would have the other connections in a similar place, wouldn't you? Yeah. Usually with a manhole. There's not a manhole along here anyway. You haven't tried to see. No. All right. You're probably older than that. Anyway. Right, we've come back to look at these two chairs. We didn't really look at them very well last time. That one seems solid. Quite good order. Ah. No bits missing. Right. Got to see a bench sofa there, I think. Oh. Little casters on it. One. I think that's a four. I think that's four hundred. Hmm. Probably he's got so much stuff for me. I can't see it. <laughs> He's looking for some big pictures, I think. That's a fifty euros. Can't like stop like that. Damn, quite like the style of that chair. Unusual, isn't it? Hmm. You look really impressed, don't you? Oh. Even here, I would be, but where are you going to put it? Well, I don't know. I think it's quite a reasonable price, actually. Mm. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Maybe if I had my workroom. You've already got a chair for that. I probably want more than one chair. So you're going to sit on two chairs at once, though? No, I'm going to sit on, I'm going to have lots of different chairs. One for sewing, one for office work, one for painting, lots of things. What's that say? What's in French, obviously? I quite like the design around the edge. It's got something written on it, I can't read it. What's it say? Chevalier. I can't read it. It has a thermometer as well. 
Also, it looks like it's probably working. It's not very warm in here. Oh, it's quite pretty, that. They're going to find Tony. Yeah. Oh, these are beautiful. Yen. These plates are amazing. There's one here with a hunting scene or hunting equipment and the hunting dog. And the big one I like. What is that one? Oh, long way. Long way. Recognise that name. There's some other junk, there are other nice. So, I'm going to go have a look at them chairs. Oh, I've already had a look. They seem quite solid, but yeah, go and have a look. See what you think. Some really interesting little bits in the cabinets. Look at these ones with the racks with all the stamps on. Oh, quite a lot of fish. There's only one bites. Look at their faces on you know. <laughs> well, yeah, one's missing a base. And the little sheep. They like Stafford too, that's what they remind me of. Oh. There's some really funky lampshades as well, the last ones. Glass vases, different colours. Right. Boxes and boxes and stuff here. Fairly cheap to me. Can't see from here if they've got any names on. Probably not. Not that price. That one to me looks quite expensive, perhaps it's an unusual one. Hmm. I like the handle on that one there, and the shape. Thirteen hours. These little cute pinky ones. Oh, they have plates of cartoons on. I don't know what it says. I'm sure someone will translate it for me or I can translate it myself. And out Tony out I think. Oh, 
Well, not very light fittings. What's on here, sure. Ten, that's not bad. Alright, Tony's waiting for me. Right, I'm in the Jeep kitchen and I'm cooking up um, the rest of the vegetables that were in the veggie box that we were given. Um, so I've got a big pot here. I didn't worry about filming me chopping them up. You don't want to see all that. So I, I had a couple of small cauliflowers. I um, just had to cut a few little bits out of those. Um, some salsify, a little bit of that. Some sunchokes, which are like a root. Veg, they're a little bit like a, they look a bit like a bulb, but they're, they're supposed to be a little bit like a potato. A um, couple of carrots, some potatoes, who's also given a sack of potatoes as well. Um, and then I've chopped them all up, I'm going to parboil them. So then the only thing that I've actually had to pay for, which I'm going to add, is a couple of onions and a tin of tomatoes. And then some spices. So we're making a vegetable curry. And this is going to make quite a lot of it. Anyway, I'm going to bring those to the boil. I'm going to chop up the onions and throw those in as well. And we just want to soften the veg slightly. And then it's going to cook for a little bit longer in the sauce. And then I'm going to freeze most of this. Because it's going to make a very big batch. I've chopped up the onion. And I've popped those into the pot as well. And we're just going to... Simmer those gently until they've just started to soften. Right, my veggies have just started to soften. So I'm not going to cook them any further else, they'll all just integrate. I'm going to take them off of the heat. And carry on with the sauce. At the same time, I've grabbed another tin of tomatoes because there's so much of it. I'm gonna need, you know, it's quite a big batch, so I'm gonna need at least two tins of tomatoes, and I'm, I'm gonna use a good squeeze of tomato puree as well. And the other ingredient is some frozen peas because it likes a little bit of green in it. If you can put some frozen beans or a chopped up green pepper, more for the look of it than anything, but I do like it with peas. I'm going to make my own spice mix. I always have a, quite a selection of Indian style spices. But if you don't, then you can always use like a proprietary curry paste or a curry powder and put some of your own flavourings in. It's up to you. But I like to make this one. This is what I use for a Bombay potato. And this is sort of going to be a Bombay potato with vegetables. So it's going to be a little bit spicy, not too much. I have got some chilli flakes. I've got mustard seed, ground cumin, chili flakes, ground coriander and coriander leaf, salt and black pepper, turmeric, paprika and then some cumin seed. I'm not going to grind those, I'm just going to put those in. So I'm going to put pretty much a tablespoon of everything except anything hot into my blender food grinder thing and make it into a a curry powder. I'm going to have a good rounded tablespoon of yellow mustard seeds. I don't have much coriander so there's about a teaspoon in there so that would be a teaspoon of that one. Right I'm going to use a tablespoon of turmeric so we've got a, a tablespoon of yellow mustard seed Around a tablespoon of turmeric, if it will come out. Right, and I want a tablespoon, rounded tablespoon, paprika. This is not the hot paprika. If you've got the hot version, I wouldn't put as much as this. 
because you'll make it very spicy. Now this is garlic powder or al moulu in French. This came from the French spice shop across the road. Across the road. But yeah, another tablespoonful of garlic powder. Or you can use some fresh garlic if you want to, if, you, if that's what you've got. But I wouldn't mix it in with the powder mix. I'm going to put that in the sauce afterwards. Right, so a rounded tablespoon of the garlic powder. I'm going to do slightly less of the next ingredients, which is ground cumin, around a teaspoon of ground cumin. This is very small, this spoon actually. Same of ground coriander. That's about all we've got left in that one. Coriander leaf, another teaspoon, rounded, oh, good rounded teaspoon of that. Teaspoon of black pepper. Around a teaspoon full of salt. You can cut the salt down if you wish, but it does obviously add to the flavour. Now I've got hot chili flakes as well. I'm going to probably put some chili powder in this as well if I can find it. Um, yeah, this grinder doesn't work particularly well, but I'm going to grind some hot chili flakes in there. Needs a little bit of persuasion. Well, actually, they're going to get ground, so I'm going to. I think I've put we put about half a teaspoon in there of the ground chili flakes. And then some chili powder. And obviously, the hot things are to your taste. I'm going to put about half a teaspoon full. That's going to make mine fairly spicy. Okay, I'm going to grind these up, which is going to be noisy. So I'm going to grind these up and then we'll come back and I'm going to warm it in the pan with some oil. Well, I've ground all those spices into a paste now. And along with that, we're, we're going to leave the cumin seeds whole. Right, I've now got a quite a deep frying pan on the heat. Let's just turn that up slightly, medium heat. And to that, I'm going to add some oil, around two tablespoons of oil. That should do. It's just vegetable oil. Actually, this is the chip one, but yeah, just vegetable oil. This. Warm the oil gently, and to this we're going to add the spices and make paste. And that's gently going to cook the spices, we don't want to burn them. Oh. I'm going to need a little bit more oil with that. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah, you need to keep stirring this so that it doesn't burn or catch on the bottom of the pan. And what we're trying to do is warm the warm the spices through so that they release all their flavours without burning them. Mm, it smells amazing, actually. I'm going to drop more oil because it's meant to be like a sort of a paste. See, 
see it very slightly smoking. So as long as you're moving it around, it's not going to burn. I've got it on. I've got it on seven, and my my ring goes up to ten there, so or nine. So it's about three quarters of the heat. If it starts to go black, just whisk it off the heat quickly. But we definitely don't want to burn it because it makes it bitter. some extras and we're ready for the next step I'm going to turn off the heat for the moment take it off of the heat just in case we don't want it to burn Right, now into this we're going to blitz the two tins of tomatoes and I'm going to mix a little bit of the, firstly I'm going to mix a little bit of the tomato puree, a good tablespoon of that, in with a small amount of water. To that I'm going to add some lemon juice well, that's the last of my lemon juice for the time being but that's about a tablespoonful oh, I'm going to put this back on the heat put it on a medium heat Put this on about number six, so it's about two thirds of where it can be. I just warm this through slightly and then add in this mixture and keep stirring because it's going to thicken up. I'm gonna liquidize the tomatoes and add them in. You can use tomato passata if you'd rather. This is two 400 grams hins of tomatoes, sometimes it's cheaper to do it this way. Right, I've liquidized the tomato, so we're going to add that in the mix and put it back on the heat. About five or six, medium heat. Now add this in. Warm it through first and start stirring it. Oh, it's really looking like a lovely curry sauce now. Is that a drink? Gin and tonic. Oh, isn't it a bit early for gin and tonic? On a Sunday, it's uh, five past three. Oh, okay. Cheers, everyone. Tony's just bought me a gin and tonic. Mm. Very good. If you have a splatter guard, I would suggest you put it on now. I don't at the moment. <laughs> now into this mix, I'm going to add the vegetables, although, whoops, I've splashed it now. Although this pan isn't going to be big enough. So I'm wondering whether to do it the other way. I think what I'll do is add in half of the vegetables and then add it back into the main pot. And then it'll be ready to freeze. Oh, I've got to put the peas in. A little touch of sugar. I think it's probably salty enough. I think that'll probably do. Let's try that. I'm going to try a good pinch sugar and when I'm stir that in taste it again and I may well add another one right. 
have another little taste. Wow, yeah, that tastes really good. Mmm, it's got quite a kick to it, but then I thought it would. So into this, I'm going to add a little bit of the veggie mixture in and then add it back to the main pan. So if, if you need to add a little bit more liquid, you can just add in a little bit, a little bit more of the tomato puree mixed with a touch of water. Which is possibly what I might do in a minute. Right. Let's add in some of these veggies. Wow, this is going to be good. A bigger pan. Wow, that's good. It does look very good. Okay, I'm gently going to stir those in because I don't want to break them up too much. Wow, looks amazing. Now this I will probably serve with tandoori chicken which I've shown you before and some basmati rice. So if you did want to eat it straight away you could just cook the vegetables slightly longer. But yeah this is sort of al dente and now I'm going to freeze it and uh, freeze it up in individual pots actually just like a takeaway. Which is something we can't really get here. The French don't really do takeaways very much. Especially not Indian. There is no Indian restaurant around here. So I will parcel those up. And we have many good curries to come by the look of this. enough to rust so that he can then weld to mend that crack so so what is this thing oh, I don't know. 